what is up here is this is Midnight Zero and welcome to a new series, a new Draft League. It's the first time in a long time that I've been playing Draft League Pokemon. But um, yeah, the, the Cooler Famuel League, the CFL uh, hosted by my good friend Sam, who you may remember from previous Draft Leagues, uh, coach of the North Ants Ninetales, is hosting another Draft League and invited me. And I have the time and am feeling it and I appreciate his invitation. So. Here we are about to start it off. Um, I had the draft just a little bit ago, so I was going to talk to you guys today about which Pokemon I drafted and why. Um, you can already see the first Pokemon, but I will say that prior to drafting, I was trying to think of what type of team archetype I would really want. And I was thinking more towards rain offense, actually. Um, I had the second overall pick, and I was thinking, if possible, I would try to get Dracovish. And I should mention before we talk about the draft that no legendary Pokemon or no and no mythical Pokemon are allowed. Uh, and there are a few other uh, bands, but they're kind of few and far between. But just to kind of keep things interesting, I know that not all legendaries are great. Some of them are awful, uh, but it just was to try to mix things up. And it is National Dex um, post Isle of Armor DLC, so a lot of the Pokemon have their new moves and such. But yeah, I was thinking I'd try to get Dracovish and Pelipper, get to abuse um, Dracovish in the rain, and potentially Kingdra, etc. Um, I also really enjoyed using Volcarona the last time I drafted it, and because it was available and it's even better now that it has access to Heavy Duty Boots, I was thinking Volcarona in the rain with access to Hurricane, um, and Kingdra with access to Hurricane, and Dracovish with Fish's Rain would be super cool. However, the first Pokemon I did draft was Rillaboom because... The one person before me uh, drafted Dracovish, which is not too surprising, but um, but it happened. So instead, I kind of had to consider whether or not I wanted to continue with my Rain archetype, and um, Rillaboom was still something I really looked forward to trying to use. Grassy Train is something I enjoyed when I drafted Tapu Vulu in the past. Uh, it's great for supporting defensive bulky pivots, while also boosting the attacks of you know the grass types that can take advantage of it. Rillaboom has, as you can see, some solid bulk, uh, that base 100 HP, base 125 attack, and some decent defense and spadef stats. The speed of 85 is actually also pretty notable, and because of its well-rounded stats, uh, you can take advantage of different sets. Um, it can run, you know, Swords Dance with Life Orb, it can run Choice Band, Choice Scarf, it can even run some bulkier Subseed type sets because of what Grassy Terrain offers. It's got decent coverage and high horsepower, Drain Punch, Knock Off, um, Wood Hammer, and Grassy Glide, so potentially even you know really strong priority as well. Uh, the ability Grassy Surge allows it to set up its uh, Grassy Terrain whenever it comes in. And yeah, um, it also gets momentum with U-Turn. Uh, it's, it's a good Pokemon, it's a really good Pokemon. And compared to some of the other top tier Pokemon I was considering, um, I didn't want to use anything that had inaccurate moves. So I was very against the idea of drafting Cinderace, even though it was probably a better overall pick. But, but Rillaboom I'm really happy with. And so then I was thinking, what should I draft next? And one of the Mons that I really wanted to utilize with Rillaboom because of the grassy terrain was actually Halucha. So we got quite a bit more of an offensive presence. Uh, Halucha is really fast. It has a base 118 speed tier, uh, meaning it gets really up there. But most importantly, it has the ability Unburden, which means when it loses its held item, it doubles in speed. So it's really fast. And it's got a base 92 attack, which is not super great. However, it gets access to um, some really strong stab moves, namely acrobatics, uh, sky attack, and close combat. In addition to a couple other coverage moves, but most of the time its stab attacks are even stronger than its super effective uh, you know, coverage moves. It can also boost its own attack with Swords Dance, and because of Grassy Terrain, I can actually activate Unburden really easily with something like the Grassy Seed. So Halucha makes a great late game sweeper, or even early game sweeper, it's a great sweeper in general. Um, it works well behind screens, etc. But basically you get a little bit of chip on your opponents and you take the chance to come in, set up you know, an SD. You can outplay priority sucker punches with stuff like Substitute or Roost. And yeah, you can maybe invest in enough bulk to take one hit to set up a Swords Dance. You can even get some health back with Drain Punch rather than Close Combat if you want. And it's a really good Mon. Um, it, it forces a lot of speed control on the opponent's team too, so I'm really happy that 
I have this Pokemon that's at baseline really fast, but could even outspeed you know some of the fastest choice Scarfers in the tier um, after Unburden. And then I also have Priority in Rillaboom. So then what? Um, I was thinking amongst the, the top tier Pokemon, which bulky Mon do I want? I need something that I could pivot into really easily, and something that worked really well in the past was Toxapex. Not everybody's very happy about Toxapex, but I really enjoy using it because of Regenerator, it's great defensive typing, and it's move pool. It has great defenses, uh, it can act as a special wall, it can act as a physically defensive wall, it has access to reliable recovery in both Regenerator and Recover, it can poison things with 100% accurate Toxics, and it can set up Toxic Spikes, it can spread burns with Scald, it can even knock off items now too. It works as a great Rocky Helmet user, it can take advantage of Black Sludge, it's, uh, it's a great um, utility pivot, and it can even trap Pokemon with Infestation, I've done that in a previous league, <laughs> and so it's, it's really fun to use. And one of the other things that's great is it really benefits a lot from the grassy terrain. It's only weak to Electric Ground and Psychic, and this, um, the, the grassy terrain halves damage from Earthquake, so it helps out a lot in that regard. And then, of course, um, just healing it more than it would normally get with regular Black Sludge recovery. So, very happy to use this Pokemon. And then, afterwards, I was like, okay, now I don't want to have, you know, too much of a uh, weakness to certain things. And I was considering James, who drafted Dracovish first, drafted Pelipper and Volcarona. And I was like, oh my god, he's, he's literally drafting the team that I wanted. But I needed a a rain counter or some counterplay to rain, uh, basically something that could absorb water type attacks or utilize the rain itself. And so what I ended up drafting next was Heliolist. Again, another offensive presence, but namely dry skin is really important because it absorbs water type attacks. It's a water immunity, which isn't even, which is necessary because Toxapex takes like 70 to 80% from a banded Dracovish in the rain, even if it's max defense, which is just, which is just unfathomable so I needed some sort of immunity to try to handle that and Heliolisk was a great option it's like I said it has the ability dry skin meaning it heals one eighth of its HP in the rain and it's also healed uh, like one fourth of its HP if it gets hit if it gets hit by a water type attack and it also has other you know weather potential as well so sand veil in the sand and solar power increasing its special attack by 50% in the sun, um, it can definitely take advantage of all those things. It also gets access to Volt Switch and has a great speed tier at 109. Again, something helpful in draft leagues is really varying your speed tiers so that your opponent needs to invest EVs in speed in order to outspeed relevant things. And Heliolisk, again, kind of helps set up that differential compared to Halucha's 118. Heliolisk is at 109. And it's also got decent special attack and access to some really good stab moves in Hyper Voice, Thunderbolt. Volt Switch. Um, it also gets Grass Knot. It can use Thunder in the rain. It does, unfortunately, use Focus Blast, which is something I'm going to try my best to never have to rely on, but it may be necessary at some point. And yeah, that's uh, that's the main, that's pretty much how Heliolisk is used. It's basically Hyper Voice, Volt Switch, Thunderbolt, and Focus Blast, and slap a Life Orb on it to do more damage, but it's a good late game sweeper as well. And um, yeah, it's also an electric resist, although it's, you know, you could hardly call it a bulky Pokemon, uh, but it's helpful to have that electric resist when you have Toxapex and Halucha on the team as well. And part of why I drafted Heliolisk is after my draft, James, who drafted Dracovish and Rain, was going to have two picks, and I wanted to get Heliolisk and Chansey, and I figured that Heliolisk would be relatively high up on James' um, draft priorities because of its utility, especially in the rain. So I drafted Heliolisk, and then immediately after, immediately after, James drafted Chansey, and I was like, what? Are you kidding me? I was, I was livid, but he drafted Chansey. I basically wanted some big, bulky Pokemon that could sponge a variety of attacks, that could really utilize the grassy terrain, and more importantly, has Wish and Teleport. Wish and Teleport have proven to be such a useful combo of moves this generation that it was really something I wanted. And Clefable had already been taken, and there aren't very many that can, uh, very many Pokemon that can utilize it to that extent. And so Chansey was something that I really wanted. 
unfortunately it was taken. So the next Pokemon I did end up drafting was actually Blissey, which is which has its pros, but it's it's definitely not quite as bulky as Chansey because of the Violite. I mean, like I said, it has its pros and cons, right? Blissey is less vulnerable to knockoff because after Chansey loses its Violite, it becomes significantly um, less bulky compared to Blissey. And Blissey, after a knockoff, uh, potentially just loses leftovers or heavy duty boots, which it can utilize to prevent getting worn down by hazards, unlike Chansey. It also has a slightly higher HP stat, so it can pass bigger wishes, only by like five or so HP, but it's something. And it also has better special attacks, so it can maybe utilize its move pool a little bit better too. So, and again, it can wish and teleport, it can set up Stealth Rock, it can Seismic Toss, Ice Beam, uh, Thunderbolt for Bolt Beam coverage, it can Calm Mind, Curse, uh, it can do a variety of things. So it's a great utility Pokemon, it's a great Cleric, um, it heals Pokemon well, it can set up Hazards, and it's a great overall sponge. And I think it has great synergy with Toxapex uh, because of the fighting type resistance, etc. And then, afterwards, I was thinking, what do I want next, and what's going to potentially go next? I ended up drafting not the Pokemon on this, so maybe I'll edit this out, maybe I won't. But the next Pokemon I went with was Ditto. Uh, Ditto is a Pokemon I love using. I, I should also clarify the rules. We were the Pokemon were tiered into different tiers, A through E, and we were given two A tiers. 3B, 3C, 2D, and 2E. And Ditto was a C tier Pokemon. I did not want to have somebody else draft. I have loved using Ditto in the past. It's great for getting information on opponent Pokemon. Whenever you switch in and transform to them, you see which four moves they have, which can tell you a lot about what item they have. And more importantly, which of your own Pokemon you can safely switch into that Pokemon. And it takes a lot of risk out of the gameplay, which is something that I'm a total advocate for. The more information I have to work with, the more um, safely I can play, and the more reliably I can make decisions, which is something I value. So that's really helpful. And then given that I also am drafting some bulkier Pokemon, I wanted to make sure I didn't get swept. Uh, I didn't want to allow things to set up because typically Chansey, Blissey, Toxapex, they've been set up fodder in the past where Pokemon knows that you know they're not going to do much damage back. So they might as well set up a Dragon Dance or a Quaver Dance or whatever it may be and as a result uh, potentially sweep. And Ditto helps prevent that by being able to threaten transforming into them, stealing you know all their stat boosts as well, and reverse sweeping them. So Ditto is really helpful in that regard. It also, if played well, can add a lot more utility to the team, basically saying, oh, with this team, I'm missing this, or I don't like my Defogger in this matchup, so I'm lacking Defog. But if you can identify what their hazard control is, you could potentially transform into them and take advantage of their own, you know, their own team members <laughs> utility. So I love using Ditto. And then after that, what did I draft next? I'm also probably gonna edit this to prevent everything from getting spoiled. But the next Pokemon I drafted was Chandelure. Um, I had at this point identified a little bit of a fire type weakness in terms of Rillaboom and Heliolisk, and I wanted to make sure that I had an immunity, not just a resistance. And I also appreciated that Chandelure is a ghost type, meaning it is a fighting immunity, which Blissey and Heliolisk are both weak to. And at this point, I was also considering picking up a dark type. So I knew that I didn't want to have too strong of a fighting weakness. And having those immunities forces my opponents to second guess whether or not they even go for those moves. And in the setting of a bulky team that is potentially poisoning, wearing away at Pokemon on the opposing team, um, making one of those decisions incorrectly uh, stands to punish them more than does me. So yeah, um, that was something I wanted. Also, Chandelure just really hits hard on the special side. Up until this point, I had Heliolisk as a special attacker, but Chandelure has some great move coverage. It can utilize Energy Ball, which could take advantage of the grassy terrain. And again, both Heliolisk and Chandelure benefit from the grassy terrain, weakening Earthquake as well. It can take advantage of really strong fire type moves like Overheat, Fire Blast, etc. coming off of a base 145 special attack. It's got a solid speed tier at 80, making it um, able to outspeed Choice Scarf Dragapult. Uh, which is probably the fastest unboosted Pokemon in the tier, or I guess in the in the league. Uh, Excelgor did not get drafted, <laughs> but uh, so it, so it hits a good speed tier there. It can run sub Will-O-Wisp. It can you know run a variety of sets too that are a little bit more interesting. But 
yeah, it's it some great offensive pressure while offering some really neat, um, I guess, immunities to the team. It has great synergy with Blissey as well in that Blissey is immune to ghost type attacks and Chandelure is immune to fighting type attacks. And I ended up picking Umbreon. I was really wanting a dark type Pokemon, and I was torn between Zoroark and Umbreon. Zoroark I think would be really fun to play with, just because of its ability, and it has some great coverage moves as well, but Umbreon was basically there in something I've been wanting to use for a long time, because look at its bulky stats, and its ability to act as a cleric for the team, it takes some pressure off of Blissey, in terms of heal bell, wish support, and uh, that sort of thing. It can attack back with follow play, can spread status, and again, it's really bulky, and having a dark type uh, was really helpful in terms of, well, immunity to, this is, it's a great knockoff switching, which I didn't want to have to deal with on other Pokemon, and it's also a ghost resist, and it's just kind of a sponge for a lot of other neutral type attacks, and... Yeah, um, I love how Umbreon looks. It's, it's cute and it's adorable, and I was excited to use it. And then I was thinking, okay, at this point, I don't have a dragon type. I don't have a fairy type, and I don't have a steel type, which is a classic core. And I have been missing out on it up until this point. So I was debating, what do I want to do next? And it didn't help that multiple other teams drafted two dragon types from the higher tiers on their team. So at this point, there wasn't really a whole lot left in terms of dragons. It was mostly like Tyrantrum, which is a Pokemon that relies on Head Smash, so I didn't want to deal with. And at this point, I was like, what do I want between my Fairy type, my Steel type, etc.? And I was really hoping for Bronzong. Unfortunately, <laughs> James, the same guy who took Dracovich and Volgaroda and Rain and Chansey, drafted Bronzong right before I was going to draft. And so my Steel type plans got destroyed. Um, I love Bronzong. I've used it in the past. It's great for setting up hazards. It benefits from the grassy terrain plenty. It can set up screens. It can set up trick room. It's it's a wonderful Pokemon, and I did not, unfortunately, get it. So, I, my Steel-type plans were thinking maybe Steelix, maybe something like Pharaoh Seed, um, but I wanted to make sure, but I wanted to decide whether or not I wanted uh, an electric community versus more hazard utility versus more mixed bulk versus a physically defensive wall, so I wasn't sure. But one Pokemon that I actually grew to really appreciate was Galarian Rapidash, which hits another great speed tier at 105 and has a really good move pool in terms of coverage. It has Zen Headbutt, it has Play Rough, it has High Horsepower, it has Wild Charge, it has Mega Horn, and it has some fire type special attacks like Mystic Fire. It has base 100 attack, which is pretty formidable when you put a life orb on it, but it can also boost it with Swords Dance. It can boost its speed stat with agility if you want to be adamant. It um, has a base 80 special attack, which you can utilize with Calm Mind if you'd like. But yeah, this is a Pokemon that, you know, it's not gonna come in and just destroy something every time, but if things are weakened down a little bit, it can come in late game and clean up because of its move coverage and because of its speed tier it can also act as a great choice scarf user and again uh, because of the psychic fairy typing it's a dragon immunity which is really important it's weak to ghost types which i have two normal types um so i'm helpful or so i'm glad with that it's also a quadruple fighting resist which is really helpful given my two normal types and umbreon and so it, it offers some really nice type coverage as well so then another pokemon i wanted to pick up uh, that I really liked before its utility was Zatu. So Zatu is a pretty cool Pokemon. It's not super bulky. Its stats are kind of bad, but it's um, it's a ground immunity. And more importantly, I wanted to utilize its ability, Magic Bounce. So Magic Bounce is an ability that allows you to basically bounce back any non-damaging moves. So stuff like Thunder Wave or Stealth Rock are bounced back at the opponent's um, side of the field. So why is that helpful? Well. Zatu can then force the opponent to think twice about setting up any hazards against my team. They need to question whether or not they're going to go for Stealth Rock, and then Zatu comes in, and now I've set up Stealth Rock on their side of the field, which is a double utility in that I get you know Zatu in, and then one of my other Pokemon doesn't have to set up Stealth Rock themselves later on, or potentially going for Thunder Wave or Toxic against any of my Pokemon. Um, it's really helpful for forcing those sorts of mind games. And then one of the other things that's great about Zatu is it gets um, some 
I guess, some momentum-based moves like Teleport and U-Turn. And it also knows Defog. If the opponent does get Hazards up, uh, getting rid of them with Defog is really helpful. It has Reliable Recovery and Roost, and it can do consistent damage with stuff like Nightshade. And yeah, um, I've never used it before, but I am looking forward to doing so this time around. Again, also, a quadruple fighting resist should I need to, or should I want to bring one, and a little bit of a fast, I guess, utility Pokemon as opposed to something like Umbreon. Um, this thing has base 95 speed, outspeeding even Rillaboom, right? And again, having those varying speed tiers is really helpful for outspeeding potential threats or forcing my opponent, again, to invest in speed rather than bulk or some other stat in order to outspeed this should they need to worry about it. So now we're getting into the last two Pokemon. Um, I still needed a Steel type, and I was debating between Steelix and Ferroseed, as I mentioned. And I ended up going up with uh, Ferroseed because I have Chandelure as a really good fire um, immunity. I have Toxapex as a good fire resist, and I really appreciated the mixed bulk and the utility that Ferroseed offered in terms of setting up both Stealth Rock and Spikes. And in terms of an electric immunity, I was thinking I would probably want one at some point, um, especially because I think that's something I'm missing out on, but Pharaoh Seed would act as a good enough resist, even if it's not an immunity. So that was most of the rationale there. It is really bulky, and so it's a great dragon resist in case I didn't want to have to bring the immunity uh, Galarian Rapidash. And then for my last pick, which will probably change, is actually Wobbuffet. I did not realize that Shadow Tag was banned. Um, Long, long story short, but the, the Google Doc that Sam created is expansive and super comprehensive, but it wasn't very clear to me during the draft that specifically Shadow Tag was banned on Wobbuffet, and so I drafted Wobbuffet under the impression I could use Shadow Tag, and unfortunately that's not going to be the case. We're allowed two transactions, meaning either trade with another player, or dropping a Pokemon to pick up a free agent in undrafted Pokemon, but... I don't know if I necessarily, well, I should use that to exchange Wobbuffet for something else, but it does unfortunately feel like a bit of a waste. In terms of nicknames, because I realize I haven't mentioned them, the only two Pokemon I have nicknames set for at the moment are Umbreon, which will be named Eevee, which is the name of Lizzie's cat, and <laughs> that was a specific request, and then Galarian Rapidash will be named after Lizzie herself, because, because she wants to be a pretty unicorn. And... That's the team. Um, it's a very, it's a very odd team, if I'm honest. It has some, it has some offense, right? It has some priority. It has some really fast Pokemon. It has some, you know, decently fast Pokemon, and it has, you know, some special hitters, some physical attackers. But then it has some crazy bulk, and then it has some weird Mons like Ditto and Zatu, and. Overall, I'm looking forward to utilizing it. Um, I think it'll be really fun to mess around with, and I hope you guys are looking forward to it as well. Um, if you're excited for the season, please do let me know. I know this isn't usually the most popular series on my channel, but for those of you that do enjoy Pokemon that have liked watching the Draft League videos in the past, I hope you're glad to see them coming back, and I hope you're ready to cheer me on. I'm working on my mindset a lot with this upcoming season in the past, um, something I really enjoyed was was winning and doing really well and team building and such, but I realized that something I also developed as a result of that was a fear of losing, and towards the end of my last season, I really stopped having fun because rather than enjoying the team building, rather than enjoying winning, I was more so just afraid of losing because of the expectations I set for myself and the expectations that others had of me as well. and. Um, I definitely want to avoid that this time around. So that's something I'm going to be actively working on and maybe commenting on, so you will you may notice that. But that's all I got for now. Um, by the time you're watching this, I'll probably have already played my first match, so wish me luck, and I'll see you guys for week one when we fight against Jerry and the California Cubones. But until then, this is the Night Zero, and this mission is complete.